Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Lord, we come at this uh, session into your mighty hands, God. We pray for God. Uh, Lord, your plans, your thoughts, your ideas. Um, and I pray that you would, uh, Lord, just move things in us, stir up things in us, Father God. You know, as we, um, Lord, talk about these topics, talk about what needs to be done, I pray that you will uh, make firm, Lord, and um, write these things, establish things, Lord, in our hearts, God. We want to thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me just share the Google Sheet. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so here's some question. Kung, yeah, I know you came in a little late. So you could um, you could take time till tomorrow morning, Kung. Yeah, or you can go watch the videos of the previous sessions. I don't know if you've already done that. Um, and you can take time till tomorrow morning uh, about the topic and more importantly, the description as well, right? Okay, I, I'm just going through uh, some of these things, um, the topic. Okay, I look at Maggie Maggie's uh, Maggie's uh, topic, the Church of the Future and its relevance in the future world. Yes, we discussed it, and uh, um, yes, that looks good. Asharani, stirring up the fire of God in your heart. You know, I I did look at your, you know, the 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 uh, what you'd sent, the document that you'd sent. Um, I, I'm not really sure if it's, uh, you know, if it's substantial, you'll have substantial, you know, if for a four month research, right? Stirring up the fire of God in your heart. Um, could you talk about this, Asha? You want to? Tell us a little more about this topic, please. Sasha, online? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, basically, as Christians, they lose the uh, flame for God. And to stir it up, to make it, we have to have the right fuse, um, such as the having the heart to, like, sometimes we grow, like, um, we lose our time in uh, our intimacy with our God and how our life is not really, our flame literally goes out when we are not literally stirring up the fire, which is um, uh, worshiping our God, having mm. the word of God in our heart daily planted. And yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah, but it'll be good if you can add some more to it, uh, Asha, because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a substantial amount of time, and this is this is nice for an assignment um, paper. But if it's a research paper, it needs to be something more. Um, yeah, please do um, add to it, right, and. Uh, Maybe you have you can you can also just like Kung you can take time till tomorrow morning nine o'clock to uh, rework this and and submit it please yeah so stirring up the fire of God in your heart you know yeah it's 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 a nice topic for an assignment for a sermon uh, but for a research paper it needs to be something more I feel uh, from what you've shared it'll be very limited. Um, so unless you have something more that I mean, when we meet uh, on Thursday, also we can talk, right? When we meet in college. So yeah, just think about this, right? Okay. Sorry, Pastor. This is my first yeah. time. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. I'm just uh, trying to understand. Uh, like, so there's no problem. But uh, try to add. Okay. So Siddhant, the various languages in the Bible. So yeah, can you just tell uh, what is it that you want to talk about, uh, Siddhant?
uh, Isidant connected. Yes, yeah, so, so um, I see that different languages in which the Bible was written. So, you know, broadly, you're talking about the Hebrew and the Greek. Um, is there anything more? So, what exactly is the nature? Can you, would you be able to unmute and speak? Are you in Bible college? Would you be able to share, please? Just, just give me a minute, sir. So it was about the history of Hebrews and Greek. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, how it, uh, the Greek transformed into the Arabic. Then mm -hmm. few part of Bible is written Arabic, some prophetic books. Um. So that. Uh, so what? What? Okay, so you're talking about the language, talking about uh, um, so so what what are you going to you know what is the objective of it? It's most kind of like history of mm -hmm. that that period, the culture, the culture of the people, yeah, and history of the language what. I think you need to think through this, Siddhant. Yes, sir. Yeah, you need to think through what the scope of the whole thing is. You know, we've already taken a bit, a fair bit of time, uh, but you need to think through what exactly you're going to research um, and why you want to do this. You know, it's. Uh, um, yeah, that's what I'm just trying to understand. You know, what is the biblical perspective? Of course, it's it's great learning to talk about uh, this, uh, these languages, um, and so on. But uh, yeah, yeah. If yes, you can sir. just explain, that's why I just wanted to know if you can just explain. Okay, what all you're going to talk about? What is this whole uh, research it's on? It's related to culture of those people, those times. So it's it's a it's a vast time period, right? Yes. Yeah, you're looking at centuries. Uh, you're looking yeah. at millennia, actually. Oh. Yeah. So how much depth will you go into? You know, you talk about. Yeah, you, you just think about it. You know, talking about uh, you know several millennia. Um, at, you know, so. The, the access to that information and how exactly what uh, exactly are you presenting you yes. know you uh, you get what i'm saying you know it's it's a, if you look at it it's it's a it's a vast thing and then and i'm just thinking okay it's good it's a it's historical etc but there will be a, some some more value i mean this is just my opinion uh, value if you give a biblical perspective of it, you know, to tie all that together, to to conclude a manner that uh, you know, with your personal uh, thoughts on tying all this together. Otherwise, it'll be a you know, it'll be a okay. This person said this. This person said that. And uh, just presenting, this is how, and it's a vast uh, time frame that you're looking at. Yeah, please do uh, think through this. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, um, uh, Jesus in the Jewish festivals that's uh, Oluwasi. Okay, Adibolas says, uh, thing. Hey, just one more quick uh, thought, you know, please uh, use the names that you have actually registered in the Bible College. So what would happen is, you know, the, some difficulty that I faced. Uh, I mean, this this is for the 
uh, other batch is that uh, um, you know your your name comes in a certain way when I look at the you know the way it is listed, and um, when we have these tests and assignments, when you submit certain things, you use another version of your name maybe, um, which doesn't match up with the registered name, and we are finding it difficult to kind of see okay who is who. Uh, so I've been trying to you know. Uh, work through that. So please use the same name that you have registered as uh, for the course, right? Just a request. Okay. So Jesus in the Jewish festival. So, so say, would you like to just uh, say online? So would you like to just expand on that, please? Yeah. Yes, Pastor. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so basically, um, I, um, after the the topic I suggested, um, I, I I found out. Yes, you were right. Um, we have dealt with something like that related to the cross covenant. So I decided to think further and then mm. um, I came up with this. And that's because uh, for some time, I have actually just been interested with uh, trying to understand the Jewish context or the Jewish context basically as related to the Bible. And mm. uh, so that, that has kind of been my uh, fascination for a while. So I said, oh, this is a good time maybe to mm -hmm. go deeper so that's why the topic jesus in the jewish festivals came in so the idea basically the objectives i i, I basically just want to is just to show that all festivals celebrated by the jewish people you know at the end of the day all points to jesus christ um to a large extent um many of the jewish people still observe these festivals mm -hmm. um either rejecting or ignoring the fact that jesus the messiah has already come Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, so the uh, the whole idea is to uh, investigate, see the significance of all these festivals that God Himself instituted and um, told, uh, instructed the Jewish people to um, celebrate, and then see how it ties to the calendar system, which right. was established in their own time, and then all together tied up, pointing it to Jesus Christ to show the significance of why all these festivals were instituted by God. So that's right. kind of the draft for me. Yeah. OK, yeah. so the centrality of Christ in all these Jewish feasts and uh, uh, that's correct. customs as well. Yeah, that's, that's that correct. should be interesting. Go ahead. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Right. So uh, Pratik, uh, reaching the unreached. Um, is Pratik online? Can you just uh, help us understand this, please, Pratik? reaching the unreached okay he's not in class i think um fine we'll just move on okay um so louis um uh, ai and the end time revival of the 21st century church is louis online no oh yeah louis uh, could you just share with us. AI and the uh, end time revival. What is the nature of, like, what is the direction? Um, OK, I'm not able to hear. Let's just, um, OK, uh, let's check. Uh, Tayesha, could you tell us? The Bible standpoint pertaining to same-sex principles. I think it's uh, it's kind of uh, self-explanatory, but if you could just explain to us uh, what is the scope of what you want to share, Taisa. Okay, uh, Rupa, so I see your comment. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Taisha, are you able to um, unmute and share about your topic, please? Um, Pastor, could you repeat, please? Yeah, I, we just wanted to understand the scope of the, the research. Uh, I see your uh, topic, which is the Bible's biblical standpoint pertaining to same-sex practices. So I just wanted to understand like, um, what exactly uh, would be the scope? What do you hope to research and uh, yeah, present? 
Okay, sure. Well, I was looking on, um, as it says, the biblical standpoint of uh, what does the Bible really speak about um, same-sex practices and marriages. So the, I will present those points and draw a conclusion from that. Mm. So that, that's the whole thing. Yeah, it would be uh, good to uh, also uh, do some research on, okay, uh, I, I know it's it's as old as, uh, you know, uh, as sin itself, right? Uh, talking about um, uh, same-sex, uh, uh, I mean, the sin and the aberrant nature of it in the in the word we see, right, right from the days of Noah. So we see that, but also it will be good to see um, how it is in the, you know, uh, how it is affected today's society and uh, the consequence of that okay it's, it's one thing to okay share from the word saying that okay this is this is what this is what the word of god says but it'll be good if you can say okay this is what is prevalent in society and also uh, just a suggestion you know to see what is the consequence of that you know what is it is the fabric of society unraveling um you know is anything happening that is uh, you know that's really uh, destroying society. You know, it's uh, so it'll be good if you can talk about that as well. Okay, that is a good idea. I yeah. started in my first draft in the introduction mm -hmm. to say um, how it has impact now over what is it um, fifty something countries how. They have mm. started um, approving. I, I did that in the first draft so far. Um, just giving a, um, a global perspective of where some of the, um, what is happening. So now that you mention it, um, this is a good idea. I think I will, I will um, include that as well yeah. as I yeah. go along. Yeah. And also, I think uh, we can also talk about um, like what does science talk about it, you know, because these are things which are. Um, if you want to call it that, the doctrines of, you know, the same-sex philosophy, you know. Um, so what is it? What is it that? What is the reference point for this? You know, mm -hmm. um, I think if you can mention that also, that will help. That will be of value. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, okay. Abinas Hebrew Hebrew names of God in the Old Testament. Um. Yeah, Abinas. Um, Abinas, are you in the class? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, okay. So the Hebrew names of God, now we have actually studied it in um, in our foundations, right? Uh, when you talk about characteristics of God, nature of God, uh, we talk about uh, the Hebrew names. Um, and it's, I think it's quite an exhaustive uh, name. The why and the and the incident and the which happens because of it i mean the the whole you know the uh, incident or this uh, i want to say story the account behind how god introduced himself and you know the i am uh, the names of god so um so what exactly do you want to do different from that uh, abinas uh past like uh, what i was going through is like uh, in the Old Testament, there are several Hebrew names of God in the yes. Bible. But uh, my objective was like, uh, where does it come from? What are the Bible references? And mm. so, many so we have why it is important to know the names of God and all of them. So we have actually studied that, Abinas. Like, uh, you know. I think we've already done it. So the, the one of the objectives is that we will not cover subjects that we have already covered in the Bible College as a part of our course, uh, either past or present, right? So this is, to some extent, we have actually covered it, you know, the names of God. Um, so I think you need to relook really at the topic, uh, Abinas. Okay, okay, Pastor. Yeah, so you need to, I think it'll be yeah. better if you change it 
something else or yeah. okay, you're doing it from a totally different angle um, that's why i just wanted to understand what is it that we're doing because it's something that's already been covered right okay so you please rework oh. it okay so hope thank william you. um thanks abinas so hope william how addiction persecutes youth in church okay so um is hope online um uh hope is not online okay okay next um prabhaka you can just uh, go to the google sheet and um uh, you can just uh, type it in Prabhaka. Um, as we are just going through this, you can enter it in, please. Okay, so Harrison, identity crisis. Um, identity crisis. Uh, so Harrison, if you're here, could you? Oh, you don't have laptop with you. Okay, so we'll we just. Uh, uh, that's fine. No problem. You can do it later. So sorry, Pastor. So sorry. Yeah. No worries. No worries. So Harrison, are you um, are you in class? I'm sorry, I'm just uh, switching between the chat and the chat box and the list name list. Um, okay, Harrison is not there. Right. Okay, uh, Tarun, uh, would you like to share advancing technology and God and God? Is it similar lines with what uh, Louis AI and the end time revival? I don't know what he has in mind. Yeah, you can just share. Go ahead, please. Uh, Louis, I haven't seen at the end time revival of the 21st century. So, yeah, AI and the end time revival. No, Correct. no, Pastor. Actually, what I'm looking at is like I picked up uh, five uh, different advanced technologies, and uh, as we explore and uh, where we stand as a world on those technologies and uh, see through the lens of the word, like for example, uh, the general intelligence, blockchain, or driverless cars, or big data analytics. So I would be briefing what the technology is, and uh, uh, as we learn more, where do we stand currently? And uh, when we reach the pinnacle of it, we see that there is a standard that God has set uh, uh, on where it can reach, and it exposes God and his wisdom uh, as we uh, learn more about those technologies. OK, OK. So um, the topic again says uh, um, advancing technologies and God encounters. OK, so you're talking about these technologies, what it is, and also how you're just tying it back to how it um, uh, how it actually reveals certain aspects of God, is it? Like certain yes. attributes uh, of God? Mm. Yeah, attributes of God and the standards that uh, God has set. In fact, we look back into creation to learn things. For example, mm -hmm. when we say big data analytics, uh, the amount of data that we are processing for, let's say, credit card transactions, uh, uh, millions of transactions which are happening per second, and the kind of the capacity and the sizes of devices that we use are so huge. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in the creation, we see that you know a brain of a dragonfly can actually process about 17,000 images uh, per microsecond. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's a very high standard that our processes, the size and the capacity, we are we are far away from there. So the God standard is much higher. But as we narrow down and advance into this technology, we only see that uh, this is something that God has done long ago. And uh, we, we match up to the wisdom of God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So, um, so can you 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 want to change it to like something about creation then, um, like rather than God encounters? I mean, I just just a suggestion. Um, yeah, I, like I'm can... still thinking through the topic. I know I didn't phrase it well, uh, but uh, I had a couple of other topics like technology and uh, in the theological lens and things like that. I was looking at, uh, okay. but I I might change it. Uh, <laughs> uh like as right. as i think through and as the paper comes together i okay. i might i will change it okay because i i'm just thinking like when you use it as a hashtag no it'll just uh, like directly lead to the thing so it'll, it's good to okay. kind of uh, be specific i think um, like what it leads to um i think that will help 
yeah but uh, yeah, yeah very very interesting so you are talk, going to talk about five uh, advancing technologies right? yes and uh, and the god encounters uh, uh, i i have also thought about like blockchain i'm not i'm not connecting to anything in creation but again the very essence of blockchain is to establish the moral framework and to hold people accountable so that we will be able to authenticate uh, things well uh, so that's mm-hmm. that something comes with the change of heart which which is again the work of christ uh, okay. in in man so that 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 is one thing that that and another one uh, when it comes to tracking everything is uh, not something that connects directly uh, uh-huh. but otherwise they they are technologies that expose that you know the god has sent, set a standard like it's it, we only uh, it increases our knowledge of what god has set forth for us mm. okay yeah so if it's i not just limited to creation i guess you can frame it in that way um it talks about the image of god character, attribute of god probably yeah okay yeah interesting thank you thanks okay so rupa said that she'll do it late uh, she's since she's traveling but uh, we had a discussion on her topic uh, creating a home away from home about uh, about open home and ministering about how ho- uh, homes houses being a, a place of uh, ministry Uh, and also the downside of it you know to do it uh, how to do it well etc so it's okay um so maxon um is maxon there maxon is going back to false prophets um so maxon you framed that uh, we discussed it last class but you framed the topic a little i mean the title of it a little differently right um false because you're talking about in today's church and uh, that's what we discussed last class so uh, kindly rephrase it a little differently because that's what will go as the you know title on the uh, report that you submit so it will be good if you can like specify what exactly it is uh, about the false prophets it's fine you know uh, to talk about the dangers to talk about uh, how it is in present day church and all that you can change it later than just saying that uh, you can actually uh, according to the scope of it right and whether it's the mainline church whether it's whatever you know you are in in africa or in a particular country i think that will help right rather than false prophets um and uh, so obviously it's uh, it's a warning it's a heads up to the believer that these are false prophets these are false false ways of doing ministry right um but also i think you just need to uh, uh yeah you just you just need to you know uh, in your conclusion okay this is what the word of god says right we are giving the biblical perspective uh, uh, in a way the antidote for what is uh, okay this is this is the ill or this is the uh, you know this is the thing that is happening uh, wrong whereas this is what it is this is what scripture says so we need to present that as well okay asha's question is can you show me an example of a research paper um yeah uh, asha the thing is um, yeah once you you know finalize on the topic we can you know do that when we come to that yeah so because i don't want us to be kind of swayed by others what others have done so yeah i can definitely share that okay um understanding the relationship between judaism and christianity so uh, abhishek uh, like we discussed last time um well uh, i mean uh, after the class we discussed this so uh, judaism and christianity so you're talking about the impact of uh, you know uh, christianity in judaism and vice versa and about talking about messianic jews and then we, we discussed that so please change the title to that i know you need to think through whatever that you are you know uh, covering um and uh, 
kind of change that, tweak it, refine it a little bit, please. Yeah. Okay. So, Prabhaka, perseverance in prevailing uh, Christians, persecution, and religious atrocities in India. Mm, maybe it can be reworded, right? Um, religious persecution. So when you say religious atrocities, uh, it's not just Christian, right? It's not just against Christians, but it's to other communities as well. Religious atrocities. Um, I was directing towards Christians only, Pastor. But yes, actually, I was trying to figure, I mean, add certain minority religion, minority group of people. So it is overall certain, some points I I like to add, like mm. where they were getting the same treatment, uh, some of the points which I want to carry. Uh, but if it is like, it should be limited to uh, like uh, Christian persecution. So I'll change it to like... Um, yeah, but you can just drop the word religious. And uh, because the word religious refers to other religions also. So you can just say persecution and atrocities. Christian persecution. Persecution against persecutions and atrocities against the Christian community would be, I think, accurate. Oh, yeah. um, and also when you say perseverance in prevailing, um, so you're actually talking about how to persevere through this, right? That is what you yeah. mean. That, mm. that main motto like how to deal with it like mm. how to overcome or yeah so you probably you, the best way to put it across is to say the christian response to prevailing persecution and atrocities so uh when you say response you're talking about perseverance talking about you know praying how you should actually so you can use the word response the church's response or uh, the believer's response to you know you, you can use that those words so you can do that okay yeah okay so uh chris uh, does alcohol have a place in the life of a believer in the current times okay so i think we we discussed that and um, so i guess uh, you'll talk about yeah you said you'll talk about your own personal experience also you can present that um, but let that be uh, you know, a smaller percentage compared to, you know, the research of, research of the whole thing. Um, uh, you're talking about the negative impact of alcohol in the life of a believer, what the Bible says, um, and also, yeah, different cultures, I guess. Um, you could even go that, take that route. Um, like, well, certain cultures tolerate it. So you could even address that. Okay, so that's uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, then Kennedy uh, handling spiritual and physical burnout among pastors and ministerial leaders. Leaders, yeah. So that is that is good. So, um, so just one uh, thing. It's a broad. Um, area so when you present findings or you you know it's good to talk about real lives um and you don't have to really mention names but actually in your research to find out from pastors from ministry leaders if you can talk and uh, and see how it has impacted them right i think it'll be closer to home you know if you can talk about maybe in your own uh, I mean, wherever you are, in your own city or in, um, you know, if you can uh, add that as well, it'll be good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Chris, um, I'll, okay, I'll thank you. Man. Uh, yeah, Kennedy. So we'll, you can do that. Yeah. So um, so that'll be good. You know, if, if you can get firsthand knowledge, you know, people whom you know, and if they are sharing about burnout in what way it was a burnout um, that'll be really good yeah. okay okay then uh come to elisha the role of media in the spiritual development of teens so uh elisha would you like to just uh, explain that please okay. 
Pastor, I will be yeah. I'll be focusing on the on the role that uh, the new media um, and how the, the church can use the media to advance the support the spiritual development of teenagers in, in mm-hmm. our churches so that how we can develop um, content uh, through the media to support the spiritual development since media has become a very common tool for everyone in our generation so that is basically what uh, i'll be looking at what how uh, what exists so far has impacted and uh, consider if there is still a gap that the the church can also uh, set in to close that gap to advance the spiritual development of teenagers within our denominations. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you can talk about, I guess you can talk about spiritual development, what it involves, you know, what you mean by spiritual development, of course. Uh, one is, uh, you know, spiritual maturity, Christ likeness. And we're also talking about spirituality, like, um, you know, development of the human spirit like the spirit man being edified discovering the gifts the you know all that is spiritual development right so so um when you look at media and uh, you can also categorize media into you know everything right uh, right from today's uh, social media uh, maybe um it should be things that people connect together uh, and then other other forms of media. Um, um, so have you mentioned social media? No, it's it's a it's media. So media can also be print. Media can also be you know other forms um, through which you know, people receive information, right? So so you can specify like what uh, media that you really want to talk about. Is it print, old school, or is it like um, so? You can specify that and categorize it uh, because people do use print as well you know but it's just that it's it's in you know in it's kindle it's digital but it's still you know in that way um so you can actually talk about kindle and uh, any other form of digital i mean print digital media i don't know how to <laughs> word it uh, what do you call that i guess ebooks and so on audiobooks Right? So you can include that as well. Then, of course, you know, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all that. So we could talk about that. Um, it'll be good to talk about the downside of it. It'll be good to talk about the limitations. right? Um, and it'll also be good to present some working models, like in the sense, if you know of churches or ministries and get information about um, who's using it and... Uh, who's using it successfully, some success stories. And also, I'm sure, you know, all these methods also have limitations, right? There's only so much. Uh, um, so should we supplement it with, of course, you know, man, human interaction, like right? people. Um, so that also, you know, so that's a gap, right? When it comes to media, where one is the... Uh, uh, you know the actual human interaction of course it happens online but then the actual you know person to person uh real uh interaction which is absent so how to supplement that right um, so that would also be useful so the scope of research again you can fine-tune it you know are you including what kind of media are you including uh also spiritual development think about it what all entails spiritual development, Christ-likeness, spiritual hunger, gifts, uh, knowledge of the word. So in spiritual media, what what is spiritual media? I mean, sorry, in, in social media and other you know, electronic form, what can it really contribute to and what it can't? Um, and you know, I think it would be good to give a realistic picture there. Yeah, I hope that helps. Yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we've gone through this. Um, 
I'm sorry about that confusion about uh, you know uh, the draft. So please take one more day. Please feel free to present it on the stream. Um, you know, on online students, um, e-learning. Please do post it in the discussion. Right in your discussion, you could just um, add it, or you could email me uh, the email ID. Also, I will post on the discussion. E this is for e-learning students, so you could use that, um, and I will go through it. Right, go through the draft. Okay. Um, any questions, or can we wrap up today's? Okay, Abhishek. Uh, uh, I thought a title like uh, like um, Messianic Judaism: A Modern Interpretation of an Ancient Faith. Uh, uh, tell me again. Uh, you uh, put it here, is it? Uh, have you? Okay, I will put it in the chat. Yeah. yeah. So um, Messianic. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. Judaism. Yeah, just put it. Messianic. Judaism. Okay. A modern interpretation of an ancient faith. A modern in interpretation of an ancient faith. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Modern interpretation. So, is it just an interpretation of something that is old, or has it really gone through change? You know. Right. So um, the fact is, like, like you were telling me, yes, people have accepted Christ. There is, you know, the growing, you know, percentage of people in the Jewish community who are experiencing salvation, transformation, etc. So we, they do hold on to certain Jewish customs, but really, they have experienced those are the Messianic Jews, right? So, so we're talking about. So it's not just an interpretation of an ancient faith, right? So I don't I don't know if you can use that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, another it's fine. You're almost there. <laughs> huh? Sorry. Study of the uh, like intersection of Judaism and Christianity. So that would be just common points, commonalities. Like what is prophesied is the reality. Yeah. Okay, just go with that. Uh, Abhishek, you think about it. Uh, you post it. Let me take a look. Yeah, put it on the Google Sheet. Let's take a look. Okay, but see, I know basically what you want to do, so that's fine. It's just that you need to. The topic should actually reflect that research. You know, it's very important. It can't be, you know, uh, it can't be saying one thing and the research be uh, something else, or you, you know, promise because that pro the topic promises what the research is about, and when when a person reads it, it has to fulfill it. That's the only thing. That's why you know we're just talking about refining the topic and you know doing that. It can't be two different things. It can't be heading off in a different direction. That's the only reason, right? Okay. Um, Prabhaka, you want to say something, and also Maxon. Yes, Pastor. I want to say uh, actually, uh, I was thinking uh, just to uh, focus on prevailing uh, Christian persecution and atrocity in India, like mm -hmm. how to with it it's a response that we we have already have in in our bible so mostly people knew about it but i want to do more research about the current contribution mm. or or throughout um the history of india like whatever happened mm. the history of india regardless of the centuries so shall i put it like a prevailing christian persecution and atrocity in india across centuries I mean, if that is what you're going to be studying, you can do that. Or, uh, you know, you can just say prevailing, uh, you know, persecu persecution and atrocities prevailing in today's church and the church's response. And I think that will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll be yeah. And then yeah. also, like we discussed, you know, uh, I think you can talk about, uh, you know, how church has been responding. Um, and then maybe if there are success, I mean, some not success stories, testimonies. That can be shared, and also if there are, you know, like the Saul's, the persecutor, um, mm -hmm. uh, experiencing transformation in the process of persecute, you know, persecuting the church. I think if those can be, if there's some research done, and that can be presented, also, that would make it even more interesting. Like in the in this climate, in this environment, the persecutor himself or herself undergoing change. If you can. 
get that, mm-hmm. that will also be fine. Yeah. Sure, Pastor. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. 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 So, uh, Maxon, your question or thoughts? Yeah, of course. I just want to ask you like, we meet once a week. So yeah. I think this time when someone need your maybe like advice, assistance in the middle of the week, which is the best mm-hmm. media to reach out to you? Yeah, I think you can just email me, please. Um, yeah. um, you can use either of those email IDs. You can just email me. Uh, like on the stream, I actually, I was uh, I was traveling, so I didn't check it. Um, but um, you can email midweek, you can email me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because uh, actually uh, Abhishek emailed and uh, and Rupa also emailed and we kind of um, had a discussion about their topic this past week. So um, so yeah, you can email me. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, we'll we'll let's wrap up for today. All the very best. Uh, these are good topics. Um, what you have, uh, you know, what you shared. Uh, just go a little deeper uh, in what seems to be, you know, if it's a broad category, you know, uh, you just go a little deeper, and uh, and it'll be good. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll uh, we'll uh, stop here. All the very best. God bless you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you.